Hello, everyone. Hello, ladies. Hello, gents. Hello, it is your girl, Leading Lady Dar here. Welcome to Walk in Them Shoes podcast. Welcome back to my returning visitors. Welcome back. I should say listeners, right? Welcome back to my returning listeners and welcome back to our newbies. I'm your host here, Darnese Bragg, founder of this wonderful organization, Walk in Them Shoes, founder of this excellent instrumental, empowering, inspiring podcast. And I'm showing up for you because I want you to know that you got this. I want to remind you and tell you that you got this. Walking them shoes is not about the hills. It's not about the wedges. It's not about the flats. It's not about the stilettos. It's definitely not about the cowboy or cowgirl boots. It's about being able to put one foot in front of the other and walk with assurance, walk, walk, walk in that confidence that you have. You know, so many times in life, we're dealt with, we deal with so many different things on so many different levels. And I think a lot of times people allow things to break them down. And I know I have, there's times things have really brought me to my knees. But one of the things I focus on is getting back up. I don't focus on staying down there. I focus on getting back up. And I'm here to encourage you to focus on getting back up, putting one foot in front of the other so you be able to walk in them shoes. Not saying it'll be easy, but it's doable. So welcome to our second season, our second episode, and our topic that's on the table for discussion is love. L-O-V-E is love. I'm sure you felt it. I'm sure you received it. I sure hope you received it. Um, yeah, it's it's 2023. January 26th, which is my birthday. Give it up for your girl. Yes. Happy birthday. Shout out to the girl leading Lady Dar here, founder of this wonderful, wonderful organization. I'm so excited, y'all. And I'm able to come and share love with y'all, come and pour into y'all and come and come to uplift you and inspire you. You know, it's not about so much where you are. Well, let me say this. I don't want you to focus heavily on where you are, because if you're going through some things, know that this too shall pass. I always talk about focusing on the journey and not the destination, because we're going to arrive to that destination. We're going to get there, but focus on the journey. But reason what what I'm saying to you now is focus on where you are, but not so heavily to the point that it weighs you down, that you can't move, that you can't walk, that you can't make progress. We need you to make progress, okay? We need you to move. We need you to walk in them shoes. So we're talking about love, good people. And I, I wanted to talk about love. Um, I, you know, last year um, and, and, and towards the beginning, of, towards the end of the year, our last few episodes was talking about the three D's, uh, death, divorce, and I always forget division, death, divorce and division. We're not talking about that. We're, we've walked into the 2023 new year and forget about despondency, despair, and depression and all of that. We're walking into newness. We're walking into the beautiful things that God have for us. We're walking into the beautiful things that we're creating and that we're building and that, you know, um, we is a possibility that we can enjoy, you know, more of the finer things now that we've divorced the pain of our past and, you know, uh, stop focusing on all the hurts and all of the things that happened or did not happen and 2022. It is a new year, 2023. So we're going to remain, we're going to remain consistent in showing up for ourselves, loving ourselves and allow love to come into our lives. So I'm going to share with you a story 
Um, it was really touching when I heard this. It's, 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 it's kind of biblical, but um, it has a principle. It has so many principles. It has a principle in it that's really meaningful and you can take it away. You don't have to be a Christian. You don't have to be um, apostolic. You don't have to be a Muslim or Buddhist or anything like that to get the gist of this and get the understanding of it. Um, I went away this weekend to Atlanta, which yes, is like my second home to me. Um, I love it in Atlanta. And you know, I uh, had a chance to, you know, everywhere I go, I'm always speaking with people and, you know, whether it's sharing and giving words of encouragement or just listening just to get to know someone and getting to know how other people live. And at this beautiful hotel that I stayed at, very, very um, welcoming. It was so quiet. When I say it was so quiet and so peaceful, I um, had a chance to, I had to come out my room uh, to get something. And when I came out to the front desk, um, well, let me say when I checked in, it was an older man there showing a younger guy the ropes. And the older man was so very patient. And what, you know, so a lot of times we see people when they're training someone is one or the other, one or, one of the two is going to be impatient and you can kind of see it on their face. Either the trainer is is getting impatient with the trainee or the trainee is getting impatient with the trainer, right? Um, but I just was recognizing and I just was noticing, you know, how the two were working together. So I picked that up when I first came in and then on my way uh, out again later on that night when I came back out, the gentleman, the younger gentleman was by himself. So I said to him, I said, oh, I said, you're by yourself. I said, so you caught on. I said, you can handle it by yourself. He said, you know what? He said, yeah, I got it. He was like, all I had to do was think about something joyful, something that made me happy. He said, because when I get he said when he when when he faced something tough, when he faced something that he felt like he can't get, he started thinking about happy things. And thinking about the happy things make him focus on being happy and not focus on being frustrated. I thought that was powerful, right? So take that home with y'all, okay? I don't know where you are, but take it, take it with you. You know, um, I did really thought that that was good. Um, a good um, method that he had to, you know, learning something new. Um, but it, it got me to thinking about joy and peace. And, you know, that's where my mind is always at. Um, even in sharing and talking with my babies, uh, yeah, one of my grandbabies yesterday, we were talking about peace. You know, those are all of the good qualities that we should enjoy in life. And I'm telling you, if your goal is not going after peace, if your goal is not focusing on being peaceful, if your goal in life is not focusing on the joys in life, there's a problem. But there's also something else that you should be focused on. And I want to say it loud and clear, love. I hope y'all hear me clearly wherever you are. If you're in your car, if you're in your bedroom, in your living room, you're on a job, I'm not sure where you are. But love is the topic of discussion. So let's get into it. I'm gonna share this story. And here we go. I heard a story about a woman, a surgeon and her husband. There was this woman who was married to this man and they were kind of like a mid middle aged couple. This man was disfigured in his face due to severe burns that he received trying to save his parents in a burning fire. And some of you may have even heard this, you know, listen to like some of the bibl bibl biblical, um, listening to some of the uh, spiritual channels that I tune into. When I heard this story, it really, really, it, it got my attention immediately. Um, and I'll share in many ways and in many reasons why. Um, so again, you know, it's a couple, a middle aged couple. This gentleman was like, his face was disfigured due to having severe burns that he had received and trying to save his parents in this burning fire. Again, this couple was about middle age, right? Due to the burns on this man's face, he had become so withdrawn, so unhappy. This man and his wife lived a life of just traveling all around the world, just enjoying one another, just happy with one another, had plans on starting a family, raising children until that particular fire happened. And that man had to go in and save and rescue his his parents. I don't even know the outcome of his parents' lives. It didn't even the story didn't even uh 
share that part. Um, but what's so amazing is towards the end of this story. And it's, it's brief. So just stay with me. So here we are. This man now has this face that's burned and he has become so withdrawn. He's so angry. He's so upset. Um, he's just distraught. You know, he's hurt. He feels alone. He feels ugly. He feels unwanted. And yet he has this wife, this beautiful wife that's by his side, stuck by him, nurtured him back to health. And, you know, but it's one thing to patch up the wounds on the outside, but really it's those wounds on the inside that really, really does something to us. Right. So years of living this way, his wife just couldn't take it no more. She went to see a plastic surgeon. She told the surgeon all about her husband, right? She told him all about her husband's burns on his face, his pain, you know, his their disconnect because they he be, he had became so withdrawn that it separated them. It caused a little bit of disconnect. But I'm going to tell you, I don't even know this part of the story and if this is true or not, but I'm just going to surmise that she was a praying woman. I'm trying to tell you, she had to be a praying woman, right? I'm just believing it. But nonetheless, she went to the surgeon to go talk about her husband and share the story about her husband and what was going on with him and their lives, right? The surgeon greeted the wife, expressed an interest in wanting to help her husband. The wife cut him off, said, mm-mm, mm-mm, no, I'm not here to schedule an appointment for you to help my husband. I'm here to ask you. Now, listen, are y'all listening? This woman cut this surgeon off and said, no, I'm not here for you to help my husband. I'm here to ask you if you can perform surgery on me to disfigure my face. I'll repeat that. The woman went to visit the surgeon and the surgeon heard her out. Said, sure, I can help your husband. Sure, I'm willing to see your husband. She said, mm-mm, mm-mm, no baby. No, 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 no. I'm not here for him. I'm not here to make an appointment for him. I am here to ask if I can make an appointment for you to perform surgery on me to, to disfigure my face. The surgeon was shocked. He was dismayed and disbelief by, by this request. Like he couldn't understand this. He said, now let me wrap my head around this. You want me to perform surgery on you to disfigure your face? He asked the woman, why would you want to do that? Grip your pearls, ladies. Gents, I don't know what you're going to do. But ladies, grip your pearls. She said, because I love him so much, I'm willing to feel his pain and suffering. What? She said, hold on. The surgeon asked, why would you want to do that? She said, because I love him so much and I'm willing to feel his pain and suffering. All right, y'all. Now, I know God said. That's the end of the story, y'all. That's the end of the story. Well, no, no, no. Technically, really, it's not the end of the story because eventually the surgeon denied her request. But he did go to go see the husband. He went to go see the husband. And when he went to go see the husband, he shared with the husband that your wife came to see me. This woman loved you so much that she came to see me to ask me to disfigure her face so that she can feel what you feel. She can relate to what you're going through. Mind you, this man stayed in his room, stayed isolated, isolated himself. There was such a disconnect, but this woman loved her husband so much. Y'all now, I don't know about y'all. I don't think I would have went that far. But I know the word of God says love one another, right? (laughs) Oh, God, that's deep. God's word tell us to build each other up. And I'm doing that on this podcast. I don't know if y'all doing y'all work. I don't know if y'all doing the work for the Lord. I don't know what y'all doing. I'm not getting ready to go make an appointment with a surgeon and tell the surgeon to disfigure my face. But I will say on this podcast that I'm here to build you up and love you and love you and usher you into (laughs) into greatness okay um but the moral of that story is love i mean that's deep rooted that's real some that's some real deep love 
Oh my goodness, who sang that song? Never knew love like this. Is that my girl? That's my girl Stephanie, right? I'm not sure. Okay, let me, I'm getting off topic. All right, y'all, let's get back on it. So love, what is love to you? Even though in a biblical sense, God says, love your neighbor, you know, love your spouse, love your significant self. But most importantly, you have to love yourself. Now, this is where I'm going with this. I want you to love yourself. Love yourself enough, one, to know that if there's a change that's needed in your life, that you're willing to make that change to make life better for yourself. But I want you to have enough love for God. Allow God to heal you so that you can love. Allow God to heal you so that you can love. And I'm saying it again. Allow allow God to heal you so that you can love. Because love is truly what makes the world go round. Okay. And I'm not just saying that because it's a song. One, love feels good. You know, and... If we don't love ourselves, we're unable to love anyone else. And that's just the bottom line. I'm going to tell y'all, with my clothing brand, Wits Brand Apparel, one of my favorite tees was Love to Love. And I made that shirt because I love to love and I felt like love heals a lot. Okay, whether you're young, you're old, middle age, love heals. You know, and a lot of times this podcast, Walking Them Shoes, Inspiring Women to Blaze the Trail to Success, is about healing. It's about love. It is about helping yourself so that you can help others. So once you help yourself, then you can help someone else. Once you love yourself, you can love someone else. But there's steps to this. And the first step is you have to heal the hurt and the pain of your past. You know, in the last few episodes, I talked about um, uh, I talked about divorcing the pain of your past. You have to stop allowing that to weigh you down. You have to stop allowing that hurt from your past to weigh you down. You have to heal. You have to heal so that you can love. You have to heal so that you can be loved. So if you're not healed, you're hurt, you're bitter. Your heart is hardened. No one can love you. No one can get through that that hardened heart. No one can get through or over that that brick wall you got up. So one, you're going to have to forgive. And forgiveness will allow you to begin to heal. So that should be the other way around. Forgive one and then heal the hurt and pain of your past. And three, you have to be patient. Be patient with yourself. Be kind to yourself then you'll also have to communicate. And this here, I am so big on y'all. I'm going to tell y'all this. This has been a good time. This has been, I'm telling you, this love topic has been a good conversation with me, myself, and a, a couple other people. And God is really good because with me doing the things that I just mentioned, those steps that I just mentioned, healing from the hurt of my past, forgiving and being patient with myself and communicating. And that's not just communicating with others. I'm talking about communicating with yourself and communicating with God. When you do those things, if you do these steps here, I'm trying to tell you, God will open up doors for you. Doors will begin to open. Paths will begin to be made for you. People will be drawn to you. I'm talking about things will begin to happen. And you know, when I walked away from my marriage, I never walked away bitter. And I never thought like, oh, I'll never love again. I just took time for Dar. I took time for myself and I allowed myself to heal. I forgave. I was patient with myself. I communicated with myself. Y'all would have thought that I was crazy. I was communicating with myself so much, but I was also communicating with God. I invited him in those, this circumstance. I invited him in those circumstances and allowed him to guide me. And I'm going to tell y'all this. Take this one to the bank, okay? Write this on your refrigerator, write it on a sticky note, put it on your computer desk. I don't care where you put it, but write it down, type it in your phone under note somewhere. Here it is. You have to recognize, I'm gonna tell you, 
ask God to help you with this. You might not get it because you might be living in something. I don't want to say sin, but you might be living in something. But ask God to help you with this. Recognize love and resist lust. I'm trying to tell y'all. I'm going to say it again. Recognize love and resist lust. Now, I know that may be difficult and challenging for some people because some people have lived in lust all their lives, okay? Some people may have went through all of their lives not even knowing what love is. But it starts with you. It starts with respecting yourself. And I had this conversation with my girls. I love my girls. I have to say, I mentor my you, my uh, young girls down at the school at the Powell Center. And I love these girls. These girls are my babies. When I say I want to do this full time with them, I, I, hands down, I really would. I would do it full time. I love them. But I want y'all to um, know that and having discussions with my younger girls group, my um my, my uh, girls that are my mentees, my girls that I mentor, you know, I teach them how to love themselves, how to uh, recognize love and healthy relationships and setting healthy boundaries. It's so important. I don't care if you're 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. But one of the things that will help you with all of that is if you focus on God, focus on him. Put your attention on him. He want that anyway. Put your attention on him. Because I tell you, I, I promise you that if you do that, one thing you got to also recognize this is you are never too far going for God to stop loving you. I'm telling you, some people have done some things. You've been places and you may think you may be thinking that, you know what, man, I done been out here so much. So it went so hard and so long. I'm doing this and doing that. I've been to this and that been to been into this and that. No, mm -mm. you're never too far gone for God to love you. Focus on God. God love you just as you are. God wants you to love you just as you are. There may be some things you need to change. He don't need you to even fix up stuff, like fix everything up and then come to him. He wants you to come to him as you are. So remember that it is your girl leading Lady Dar here. Just trying to pour some inspiration into you. Just trying to motivate you and encourage you on this, encourage you on this journey of becoming. God will heal you. And one thing's for certain, two things for sure. He'll fix you. And that's a part of the healing. He'll protect you. He'll provide for you. He'll also send you someone that's compatible for you if you allow him. And guess what? If you, if you allow God to send you that someone that's compatible for you, that man too, or that woman. Well, I don't know about the woman, but yeah, pretty much. Yes, she will. Pro will protect you, provide for you and profess their love for you. Because that is all of the things that, that we want. That's all the things that God wants for us, right? Just like the woman in this story, she loved this man. She loved her husband. You know, she wanted to protect him from the hurt and the pain that he was feeling. She wanted to provide love. He was just kind of withdrawn. She had already professed her love for him. So it's doable. Women can do the same thing. But I don't know. I don't know about this figure. I'm trying to tell you. But guess what? It ain't about me. It was about them. And the moral of that story is love. Love yourself. Love God. God will bring you that someone. Listen, y'all. I had made a post the other day. I guess I'll share this with y'all. But I had made a post the other day and the post read, I don't remember exactly verbatim, but it read something about love is in the air. And I, when I say to speak those things that are not as though they are, listen, 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 love was in the air. <laughs> Truly it was, and I'm so grateful. Um, but yes, y'all, love is the topic of discussion. Love yourself enough to let go of the hurt and the pain of your past. Forgive others. Be patient and kind to yourself. Communicate with yourself, with God and others recognize love and resist lust that lust will have you somewhere honey 
that lust will have you somewhere that you don't need to be. Now, I'll be trying to keep it clean here on this Walking Them Shoes podcast, but I'm going to tell you that lust can have you bent over somewhere, can have you somewhere you wake up and wonder, why am I here? Listen, recognize love. Respect yourself enough and know that you're deserving of love. Time out for the lust, okay? Time out for the lust. And once you get in that love and that loving relationship, go ahead and lust on with one another. Lust on. Get your lust on. Go ahead. You know, but do it right, good people. So again, welcome, welcome, welcome to my newbies for listening to this Walking Them Shoes podcast. Thank you so much for my returning visitors. It is your girl, Leland Lady Dar. The motivational, inspirational speaker, the mentor, the certified Christian life coach, and the business coach, and did I say mentor? Yes, but author as well. Yes, your girl is doing the things to bring inspiration and inspire others and then motivate others and trying to uh, help women get from one part of their lives to another. This is my mission. What is yours? Walk in them shoes, good people. Thank you so much. I hope to see you around. I hope that you'll tune back in for another episode of Walk in Them Shoes. Have a good one. <laughs>